stress and depression has taken on a whole new meaning as we deal with this pandemic. Yeah, a COVID Christmas isn't what any of us had planned, but here we are, right? Here to give us some coping techniques to get us through these difficult times, psychiatrist Dr. Sue Varma, who really specializes in mental health and emotional wellness. Dr. Varma, welcome back to the Pixel More News. Good to see you. Thank you. Great to see you both. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays, Dr. Varma. So everyone blaming COVID, right, for making this Christmas sure. just stressful, mm -hmm. unnecessarily stressful. But the truth is this time of year is tough, even when there's no pandemic. Mm -hmm. So what makes this time of year so tough for so many people? Exactly. And, you know, I want to caution people to say that, yes, COVID is uh, majorly contributing to our mental health this year and the issues that we're seeing. But let's not forget the usual suspects, which are seasonal affective depression, uh, seasonal affective blues, winter blues, holiday blues. So this is when people's mood dips because we're dealing with shorter daylight hours. Um, people might feel sluggish. They are uh, craving carbohydrates and um, sugars and they're having very low energy. And also, let's not forget that the holiday blues, that for some people, you know, for any number of reasons, not just COVID, the holidays are a difficult time because they're not with people they love. And look, I wanna make an important point is when we have expectations that are different than our reality, anytime that there's a gap in the way that we want things to be and the way things actually are, we're always going to feel disappointment. And so there's a, a variety of ways to deal with this. One is lower your expectations to make them more in line with reality. I don't mean lower your expectations as in, you know, stop having hope and stop having big goals, but just make them more in line with the reality. Or you can boost the way that you look at your reality by having gratitude. So there are a variety of simple things that we can do, but absolutely it's not just pandemic. It's it's just it's the winter and yeah. it's the dark and the cold. Right. Yeah, everyone grasping for control. And in this case, we have control over seemingly nothing, which is so frustrating. Uh, Dr. Varma, have you seen a spike right now kind of leading up to the holidays and people seeking treatment for depression or anxiety disorders? And if so, what has been the most common complaint for your patients? Yes, and I'm seeing a variety of things that in addition to the usual, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling unmotivated. That's a big one where people are like, I've dropped my exercise plan. Um, a lot of people are confined to their homes simply because it's cold, not just because of the pandemic. Um, and they're feeling lonely or if they're stuck at home, they're arguing more with people. So there's a lot more family tensions that I'm seeing. But lack of motivation is a big one um, in addition to anxiety and depression. And a lot of people don't realize that the seasonal blues actually start beginning in September. Yeah. So if we tell people to get light there, Therapy, you know, and to, to get a lot of that exposure to daylight, that has to start early on, and it's just catching up with people now. Well, you know, and the mental health problems are, are compounded, like you said, by COVID because of the loneliness and the isolation, right? So even before COVID, there are those folks who may feel like they're alone. They feel the pressure to have a, to have a, a wife or a husband or whatever it may be, and now you're even alone because you can't be with your friends or family. So what's your way of coping yeah. with that? Yes. So I would say, you know, one thing to, we should know about um, loneliness is that it's a subjective quality. It's what we feel. It has nothing to do with how many people are around us because there are a lot of people mm. who are surrounded by people and they still feel lonely That's very true. And because they feel misunderstood and they feel invalidated or that they're not seen. So I would say keep up with those quality connections because it really doesn't matter where you're getting love from. The point is that you're getting love and that you really feel seen and you feel that somebody's got your back. And there are ways to keep in touch with people, right? Like we've been doing Zoom. We've become all experts in this. Um, or FaceTime or even uh, writing letters to people. And that has two um, benefits. One is that you are uh, showing and expressing love and concern for somebody else. And altruism is one of the key hallmarks in resilience is like mm -hmm. giving back. So if you're able in any way to give back, even if it's a letter of gratitude, what, what, it does, uh, it was, what it also does is shift your mindset to be like, wow, people do care about me, right? So when you're expressing gratitude, you're actually being thankful and it invokes a lot of positive memories, which puts you in a positive mood as well. So reaching out for connection and, you know, there are four habits that I talk about, yeah. um, the four M's of mindfulness, um, which is movement, mastery, meaningful engagement, um, and um, uh, what I mean by this is like the movement is get out 10 minutes of uh, daylight, sunlight, daytime sunlight exposure yeah. um, and any kind of weights that you can do at home. Mindfulness, 10 minute app, um, breathing, mastery, simple things that you can do um, that are good, that are healthy, that are helpful, that are, you know, engaging right. in your hobbies. Um, and then, you know, meaningful engagement is to have those uh, vulnerable, real, authentic conversations with people. Yeah. And we only have a few seconds left, Dr. Varma, but. 
for me personally, you know, I suffer from really bad anxiety and I fall out of a routine, you know, you're like, oh, I'll do the workout tomorrow. Mm -hmm. How do you get back into the routine? Yes. You know, I would say put the cart before the horse, even when you're not feeling like it. The problem is that people are waiting for inspiration. They're waiting for motivation. They're like, when I feel like it, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to say, start small. Tell yourself, you know what? I'm not going to do more than five minutes. Uh. And I bet you, you know, what I used to tell myself all the time is like, I'm only going to do five minutes. And then when I sit down to do five minutes, naturally you, you get, you right. build a momentum. Exactly. So, and then get your, your workout clothes ready, put them on even before you're going to jump on that work, work call. So that as soon as you're done with that, you're ready to go. Yeah. I got to find my workout close first. <laughs> Dr. Varma, <laughs> thank you very much for being here this morning. Uh, and if My pleasure. If you'd like more mental health tips from Dr. Varma, check out her Instagram page. It's mm -hmm. a wealth of knowledge. Yes. Dr. Sue Varma, happy holidays to you and thanks mm -hmm. for being here. That's a great point. Sometimes just putting on the workout yes. clothes is half the battle and it makes you actually want to work out because yeah. you're like, okay, I got these clothes on. I got to dust them off Let first. Me do that. Right. Ooh, ooh, spilled ooh, my ooh. coffee. Again, there we go. this is there the we third go.